my next guest, Dr. Paula Joyce, the life doctor, co-author of the best-selling book, Nothing But Net. Dr. Paula Joyce has literally helped thousands of people improve their health, wealth, and relationships through her writing, coaching, and speaking. Dr. Paula's clients attain success, achieve breakthrough thinking, and enhance productivity by working with her ultimate creative problem-solving process to align and integrate the information in the right and left sides of the brain. Man, do I need some alignment. Paula, Dr. Paula Joyce, welcome to Money for Lunch. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, I love it. Let me ask you this. As a life coach, you often help people who suffer from financial abuse. What exactly is your term for financial abuse? Well, it is um, can take a number of forms, and since it's not talked about very often, most people don't even recognize it and often think of it as just what happens normally in a marriage or in a relationship, or they just get angry and cut off from family members because they don't understand the root of what's going on or the definition. So some examples are the main thing is that you lose control of your money. Either you turn your paycheck over to a spouse or a parent or another family member, your inheritance gets taken from you and you don't know what to do, you um, get credit card debt because somebody who you gave your credit card to a child or a spouse overspends and then you become responsible or they take out a loan in both of your names and suddenly you're responsible as well. Um, There can be times when a spouse refuses to work and so you become responsible for the household expenses. Or you split things up in such a way that you don't get any equity. The house is in his name, but you have to contribute to the payments or you buy incidentals or things like food and electricity and so on so that at the end you're left with nothing. And the worst All right, so, is... So let me ask you this. Let, let me ask you this because this topic, I would love to spend an entire show talking about this this subject this is such an interesting subject matter. So real quick, what would you suggest to somebody who's in a position where maybe they are being financially abused? They are contributing. Things are not equity or, or, or equally in their name. Or, you know what, let's – gosh, I, I love this topic, uh, Dr. Paula. I would love to do a whole show on this. I, I'd love to so, do that with you. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many people that would just like – probably just freak out when they uh, anyways i'm interested to hear your take on this what is your suggestion when somebody is feeling as though they're being abused you need to seek help but help from somebody who really understands what's going on because most people who are in the helping professions don't understand abuse at any level, let alone financial abuse, which almost never gets talked about. So you have to go to somebody who you deem an expert, who you know can really help you. I have success in working in this area, and I work with people over the phone. So I'm one go-to person. I'm sure that there are others. But to be sure to check out, just because somebody has a credential as a counselor, as a social worker, psychologist, psychoanalyst, coach, doesn't mean that they have the credentials and the expertise and the know-how to help you with financial abuse. Let me ask you this. Speaking of uh, of just financial abuse, but are you successful in helping clients who experience other forms of abuse? Absolutely. I mean, there are numerous forms of abuse. Generally, we hear about physical abuse, incest, but there are numerous forms of abuse. Sibling, um, there's sibling rape, there's sibling bullying, and I'm not talking about normal, you know, arguing, but there's repetition. Um, Even bullying, we don't call it abuse 
it is abuse. Um, there's verbal abuse, emotional and psychological. We give fancy names to things to, to hide what's going on. We talk about people who are controlling, manipulative, anger problems. These are all abusive languaging. It's languaging that hides the abuse that's in the relationship. So whenever you hear those kinds of words, it was like a friend of mine who teaches anger management said, he said to one of, one of the people in his class who said, I have to hit my wife. I can't control myself. He said, if you ever hit your boss, you know, he can control himself. He chooses not to. We know right. who we can hit on and where we can do it. The process that I use helps people truly heal from abuse. Most people, again, who are in the helping professions don't understand abuse. They don't recognize it. They think it's just normal relationship stuff. And so they deal with it in that regard, and people spend years and thousands of dollars and their hope. The worst thing is that they spend their hope, and they get nothing for it. And they don't understand what's going on, so they can't change anything. The process well, let me ask that you I... this. Here, let me ask you this. I, I want to put you on the spot a little bit here. Okay. Because you mentioned something earlier that um, that you know, seek some help. Make sure that they're qualified to help you if you're in an abuse situation. And even if they're credentialed, they may not be. Uh, what do you call it? Able to help you in, in your particular abuse situation. So, how is your coaching different? From the process, let's say, of other coaches or other professionals, what is it that makes you different that's helping you get success? I use the brain to help people integrate what's in the conscious left brain and in the unconscious right brain and pull it together so that what's hidden becomes obvious it comes to the surface it becomes known what happens is that the right brain is the creative unconscious intuitive part of our brain and it communicates in images so we almost never hear or know what's happening in our right brain it's the still small voice it's 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 our um, inner wisdom our soul our higher self so that's the quiet part, but researchers estimate that there's 10 million times more information in that part of our brain than in the logical left brain, which is the conscious part that communicates in words. So that's the part that gives us all kinds of information that we listen to all day, often abusive stuff like you're not good enough, um, you'll never succeed at that, What you know, if you leave this person, you'll die. It's only because right. of them that you can make it in life. So the the process just uses, it's very simple. Everybody I've ever worked with it can do it. I do it on the phone. I've had clients in Germany, New York, California, all over the world. And so you get into what's hidden, you bring it to the surface, and then you know what it is that's preventing you from making progress and that's keeping you stuck in negative patterns and bad relationships and in abuse or in whatever it is that you're stuck with. And then you can use the left brain to help you move forward in a positive way. Now that your right and left brain are connected and aligned, you can go forward. Otherwise, it's like two horses pulling in opposite directions and it pulls, uh, doing a tug of war. And you, you get a little bit to the this side and then you make a little progress on the other side, but there's always that pullback, and you wonder why you're confused. You wonder why you're not making progress. You think you're a failure, but it's really because you've got thoughts, emotions, and ideas that are hidden in your right brain that prevent you from moving forward. All right, well, let me ask you this. You work with business and business owners as well. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so so what do you do with business people? It's really the same process. And, in fact, I worked with a group, um, the, the Synergy Group, which at that time had the Verizon contract. And because they had employees in, in different um, physical settings, 
communication was a major problem. And I worked this process with their leadership team. In two hours, they solved a problem that they had been dealing with, unable to solve, for a, an ongoing period of time. And now, every time they have a leadership team meeting, they use this process in order to get the meeting going and solve their problems. I've worked with American Express Financial Services on helping people remove the hidden barriers to becoming the best salesperson that they can become. No matter what is going on, people can get into deep information that they can't get to from just thinking or brainstorming or talking. I worked with one man who was uh, who had his own business, and he was a very smart man and had spent two years trying to figure out how to get a $68,000 software package that he could not afford because um, he was a small businessman. In, right. in two hours, he came up with a solution that was a win-win, saved, him 68, 000, saved himself $68,000. What he did was call the company, offer in exchange for them giving him the software, he would give them the data that they needed in order to prove the effectiveness. It was a win-win, and it was easy, but in two years of coming from just thinking, he couldn't get it. Right. Well, you know what, and, and, and of course, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, what's the old saying, hindsight is twenty twenty. Yeah, you can look back and say, man, that was so easy, but until you're able to get to that point, uh, you're stuck, you're frustrated, you're not going anyplace, and unfortunately, we have to go, we're out of time. If you guys want to find out more about Dr. Paula Joyce, go to paulajoyce.com, that's P A U L A. J O Y C E dot com. Dr. Paula Joyce, it's been a pleasure. I'd like to have you back and discuss more about some of this abuse stuff. Thank you for stopping by today at Money for Lunch. Thank you for having me, and I would love to do that. You have right. a good day.